Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. I am coming to you live from the campus of Dover Sherborne Regional High School in Dover, Massachusetts. Here to bring you live coverage of today's high school varsity baseball contest between the hosting Raiders of Dover Sherborne High School and the visiting Brookline High Warriors. Brookline riding high into this one off a three-game winning streak. They're hoping to make it four wins in a row and improve to five and one before, you know, spring break around uh, Patriots Day next week. Brookline does still have three games on the docket during that spring break week, but still, to enter that part of the season with five wins would be huge for the Warriors. But... You know the Raiders aren't just going to sit there and let them get that win. This is going to be a good one. So be sure to enjoy it, folks. A reminder, as always, uh, if you end up enjoying this live stream, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming live streams. You know, like I said... Three more games on the docket for Brookline next week during spring break. Be sure to stay tuned for those. Subscribe to the channel can help. And as always, I encourage audience participation in the live chat. Could be as simple as go Brookline or go DS or go Warriors or go Raiders. No matter who you're rooting for, we appreciate fans showing their support in the live chat. And then if you want to show support to a specific player, that's always a good reason to participate in the live chat. Maybe you're tuning in to support a family member or a friend. You want to give them a shout-out. Maybe you want to let us know where you're tuning in from. Sometimes we hear about uh, people tuning in from different states and even different countries with these online live streams that can be watched all over the world. That's always a, a cool thing to hear about. On a more important side... Uh, if you notice any technical difficulties with the stream, I know during yesterday's game against Needham, we experienced a fair amount of issues with the Wi-Fi connection. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, we experience problems with the audio sometimes, too. You know, I'm always going to do my best to uh, fix those issues when they happen, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's harder for me to notice on my end. So I appreciate you guys keeping your eyes and ears out uh, and letting me know in the live chat or through email if uh, if you're not comfortable with YouTube's live chat system. And then of course, uh, if you're uh, and then of course, if I'm uh, botching the pronunciation of anyone's names, whether it be on uh, Brookline's side or on Dover Sherborns, I encourage people to correct me in the live chat. I want to give these young men the best coverage I possibly can. And to me, part of that means getting their names right. And on the note of those names, let's read out our starting lineups real quick before we hit that intro video. Actually, you know what? Let's hit the intro video first. At Dover Sherborne High School in Dover, Massachusetts, I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, and you are watching Brookline High Baseball. <laughs> And he laces it out to right. Harrison Siegel delivers. All right, taking off for second. It's a low skipping throw. Melt throws down, and they got him in time. Hits it. He wins it. Hugh Bollinger, welcome to the Warriors. Brookline wins.
I just realized that my headset was off that whole time. Oh, boy. We're off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. Great start. So uh, I just finished reading through the lineup with a muted headset. So we're off to a roaring start here. But thankfully, I realized my mistake before the action got underway. So bit of bit of an early hiccup on my part. That's my bad. But... Brookline coming to the plate as Dover Sherborne takes to the field. Starting on the mound for the Raiders is number four, Jackson Shuzda. For Brookline, the batting order leading off second baseman, Keenan Sawada. Batting second, center field, Harrison Siegel. Batting third, right field, Elias Brendel. Batting cleanup, shortstop, Felix Hom. Batting fifth, first baseman, Adam Rosenblatt. Batting sixth, the catcher, Avery Melton. Batting 7th, the pitcher, Owen Hoffman. Batting 8th, the left fielder, Ben Rosenblatt. And batting ninth, the 3rd baseman, Ben Doktoroff. Looks like the warm-ups are about to finish for Dover Sherborne. I believe I heard the catcher, Theodore Allen, calling for a throw down to second, which traditionally ends in field warm-ups. And indeed, here we go. Leading off for the Brookline Warriors in the top of the first inning, the, sec uh, the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. First pitch from Shuzda. Low and away, ball one. Sawada so far this season, four for 15, five walks, two steals, one run, and two RBI, as you can see on the bottom of your screen. As Sawada lifts that one high, going to stay in the infield, shortstop under it, and he's got the catch. Ross Lipsky puts the glove around it for out number one. Now batting for Brookline, the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. First pitch catches the high corner, strike one. Chases that one low, strike two. It's a hard hopper, gets past the third baseman down the left field line. Chase down well in left, and that's going to hold Siegel to a single. But Brookline has their first runner aboard. Now batting the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Throw back to first, and Siegel dives back safely. That one tipped. Strike one. Brendel so far this season, four for 11 with one double, six walks, two hit by pitches, one steal, a team leading six runs scored, and four RBI. Swing and a miss there, strike two. Tempted pick off, but Siegel dives back again. And that one catches the zone, three pitches, three strikes. Brendel goes down looking. Now batting the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. 
Siegel takes off, pitches in for a strike. Siegel down to second, slides in safely, and the throw got away. It took a weird ricochet off the body of the shortstop, and Siegel went down to third on the error. Siegel takes it from first to third. And now Felix Hom, who is tied for the team lead in RBI, has a chance to add to his mark, but that one hits the high outside corner for strike two. Shoes did not hesitating to throw strikes here in the first inning. That one skips away though. Siegel is rushing to the plate. And Siegel scores! Harrison Siegel takes care of business all by himself. A one-out single, a steal, advances to third on an error, and then scores on a wild pitch. So Brookline first on the board. Right before Hom goes down on strikes. I accidentally reset the count when I didn't have to there. A hard throwing performance in the top of the first from Jackson Shusta, but due to a couple of miscues and the aggressive speedy base running of Harrison Siegel, Brookline does get on the board. Our score going into the bottom of the first, Brookline 1, Dover Sherborne 0. Owen Hoffman taking the mound to start for Brookline. As you can see from the stats, this is his third pitching appearance, his second start. He's got a one and one win loss record. He had a nice uh, two innings, uh, two shutout innings of relief on Monday against Natick. And then last week he had a rough uh, starting performance against Waltham in Brookline's only loss of the season so far. Cumulatively, he's got five innings pitched for the season so far, a 4.20 ERA, a 1.60 whip, and two strikeouts. Starting lineup uh, batting order for Dover Sherborne, leading off the second baseman Grant Wires, batting second the center fielder Brian Olson, batting third the DH Luca Mariano, batting cleanup the first baseman Thomas Wyatt, Batting fifth, the left fielder, Will Foreman. Batting sixth, the catcher, Theodore Allen. Batting seventh, the pitcher, Jackson Shuzda. Batting eighth, the third baseman, Max Goldberg. Batting ninth, the shortstop, Ross Lipsky. And then they have John Clark just playing the field out in right field. And once again, if there are any Dover Sherborne fans listening in and you hear me uh, butchering the pronunciation of any of the players' names, uh, please feel free to let me know either in uh, the YouTube live chat or uh, in an email, whatever you're most comfortable with. All right, there's the throw down to second, and now we can get the bottom of the first started. Brookline, full infield huddle before their first inning on defense. And here we go. Leading off for Dover Sherborne. The second baseman, number 28, Grant Wires.
First pitch, he skies it, going to stay in the infield, being tracked by Doctoroff, and he dropped it, and it dropped in fair territory. Lost that one in the sky, and Wires reaches on an E5 to start. Now batting the center fielder, number 24, Brian Olson. Attempted pickoff, and Wires dives back to the bag. Interesting to spotlight Adam Rosenblatt at first. This is his first game back after suffering an injury in last week's Waltham game when he crashed into the fence chasing after a foul ball. As the first pitch to Olsen is outside for ball one. I think I'd heard that Rosenblatt injured his thumb and his toe on the play and had to come out, and he's been, you know, sitting out just to be just to be safe the past couple of games, but now back at first base as that one caught the zone for strike one. Swing and a miss there, strike two. This one lined out to right, and it's going to be chased down by Brendel as Wires advances down to third on the single by, Grant, uh, by Brian Olson. Runners at the corners with nobody out. A tough situation in the first inning for Brookline. Now coming up, the designated hitter, number three, Luca Mariano. First pitch is high for ball one. This is an interesting situation with the base runners where they are. Hoffman is probably going to lean more towards high pitches to help his catcher have a greater jump for a potential throw to second and also to prevent a wild pitch skipping past as he goes for a high strike there. With Olsen on first and Wires at third, the potential for a steal of second with, you know, a potential double steal complementing it is strong. As this one is low but blocked well by Avery Melton behind the plate. Two and one the count. We got our first note in the live chat from a Brookline fan. From Barbara Jo Metzger. Go Warriors from Buffalo Neen again, Barbara. Enjoy the game. That one's low as well, ball three. Three and one, the count now to Mariano. Runners at the corner is no outs and a hitter's favoring count. Runner takes off for second. And it was ball four anyhow. Just low and Mariano checked his swing and just like that, Dover Sherborne has loaded the bases with nobody out here in the first. Now batting the first baseman, number 17, Thomas Wyatt. This one lifted deep out to center. Siegel is under it, got the catch, runner's tag, and they throw to third to try and uh, check Olsen at second, but Wires does come home on the sack fly. We are tied at one. So Wires scores the first run for the Raiders. One down now as up comes the left fielder, number 27, Will Foreman. First pitch, just high, ball one. Runners still at first and second. Mariano at first, Olsen at second with one down here in the bottom of the first inning. That one high and in, ball two. Right 
Swing and a miss there. Caught him low and in for strike one. That one low for ball three. Three and one, the count to Foreman. That one catches the outside corner, strike two. Full count here. A ball would reload the bases, a strike would be a big second out. And he tips it, stays alive with a full count. And he skies it, going to stay in the infield. It's being tracked by Rosenblatt. And he's got it for out number two. So it is a big second out get for Hoffman. Now batting the catcher, number two, Theodore Allen. Two down, runners still at first and second. And he slices it foul and out of play. Attempted pickoff, but Olsen gets back safely. Of course, yesterday we saw Brookline's Charlie Engelman with a slick pickoff move at second. They got two separate runners. But that time, Olsen gets back. In the zone, strike two. Owen to the count now to Allen. This one skips in the dirt, well blocked by Melton, ball one. And he rips it out to center, caught by Siegel, and that will end the inning. At the end of one, we essentially reset from scratch. We are tied at one apiece. And really, in regards to both pitchers, I, I think both of those runs are going to go down as unearned, as both involved an error. For Dover Sherborne's run, obviously wires reached on an E5 on that pop-up that Dr. Off lost track of. And for Brookline, Siegel only got down to third because the throw from the catcher took a bad bounce off someone's body into the outfield, which allowed him to get to third, which then allowed him to score on the wild pitch. So... I would say no earned runs as of yet for either side. Another note in the live chat from Mary Walker. Go Brookline from Groton, New York. Got a number of uh, New York uh, fans tuning in from New York for this game. Happy to see you tuning in, Mary. Enjoy the game.
It will be the five, six, seven hitters coming up for Brookline. Rosenblatt, Melton, and Hoffman. First up for the Warriors, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a, a graphic for him as uh, the, only, uh, the only game where he's had plate appearances was the one game uh, I wasn't there for, that being the season opener against Newton South. In that game, Rosenblatt was 0 for 1 with two walks. And then after getting injured in the Waltham game before he had his first plate appearance of that game, you know, this is his first game back. 0-1 the count. Rosenblatt lifts one out to left. And it's caught by Foreman for out number one. Now batting. The catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton tied for the team lead with five RBI. He's gotten all five RBI this week as he swings and misses for strike one. Had three RBI against Natick on Monday and then had two more RBI against Needham yesterday as takes one to the outside corner, strike two. Also has a team leading seven walks three of which came in that Natick game on Monday. Reaches low, hits a grounder over to third, fielded, thrown to first, and it's there for out number two. So two down quick for Brookline in the second. Now up the pitcher, number 15, Owen Hoffman. First pitch in there, strike one. Slice that one foul, strike two. As you can see from the stats, Hoffman numbers, Hoffman's uh, individual numbers don't exactly pop. Only one of 16 with three walks, but he's scored four runs. So he's been very timely in when he gets on base. Takes strike three there, and that will end the top of the second. Brookline goes down in order. We move to the bottom of the second. Still tied at one apiece. It'll be the 7-8-9 hitters coming up for Dover Sherborne, Shuzda, Goldberg, and Lipsky. And we got another note in the live chat from one of our DS fans, Catherine Olson, who I, 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 th I think I read out your first message in the live chat back when I didn't realize my mic was muted. So now I will say thank you for tuning in, Catherine, and I hope you enjoy the game. And then another one from Sherry Thayer. Shout out to Jackson Shuzda on the mound from family in Vermont. Get it done. Happy to see you tuning in, Sherry. Hope it's not too cold up there in Vermont. And, I mean, hey, Jackson is having a nice outing so far through the first couple of innings. And not hesitant to throw strikes. We see a lot of two-strike counts coming up against the Brookline hitters so far in this one. And now leading off at the plate for Dover Sherborne will be the pitcher, number four, Jackson Shuzda. So we go from one pitcher versus pitcher matchup 
in the top of the second, immediately to another one here in the bottom of the second. First pitch from Hoffman is high and in for ball one. Both pitchers coincidentally batting seventh in their respective team's batting orders today. That one high as well, ball two. Tips that one into the gloves, strike one. That one hits the zone as well, strike two. Two and two, now the count to Shuzda. Swing and a miss, strike three. So the two pitchers put each other down on strikes. Now coming up for the Raiders, the third baseman, number seven, Max Goldberg. First pitch hits a high chopper over to third field by Dr. Off. Long throw to first, and it skips past Rosenblatt and out of play. So Goldberg reaches on the E5. And he gets to go all the way down to third as it bounces out of play. Or is it to second? Yeah, it looks like, okay, it is second. For a second, I thought uh, they were letting him go all the way to third, but he just needed to get a base runner's glove. It's my mistake. One out, runner at second. Now up the shortstop, number 21, Ross Lipsky. First pitch, and he slices it high into shallow center. Siegel charging in, makes the grab, and it was too shallow a fly to advance the runner. So two down as we cycle back to the top of the order with the second baseman, number 28, Grant Wires. Wires, his last time up, he reached on an E5, later came in to score what is so far the only run for Dover Sherborne. First pitch in there, strike one. Goldberg stands at second with two down. Slices this one foul and out of play. It's a hard grounder past Hoffman, but fielded by Sawada at second, thrown to first, and that is out number three. Through two, we are tied at one. Brookline one, Dover Sherborne one. It'll be the eight, nine, one hitters coming up for Brookline this inning. Ben Rosenblatt, Dr. Off, and Sawada.
Pardon me, sorry about that. Sinuses just acted up for a moment there, but I'm alright. Leading off for Brookline, the left fielder, number 18, Ben Rosenblatt. This is Rosenblatt's third plate appearance so far this season, but it could go down as his first at-bat of the season as he swings and misses at strike one. He's 0 for 0 so far with two sack bunts. As he takes strike two, again, Shuzda, very efficient with his strike throwing. This one sliced high in the air. It's being tracked at first, and it's dropped! Another ball lost in the sky. It's not a very sunny day, but maybe the ball is blending in with the, the gray of the overcast sky. I don't know. But Wyatt lost track of that one, and Rosenblatt reaches on the E3. Now batting third baseman, number eight, Ben Doctoroff. The check on Rosenblatt at first. He shows bunt and fouls it off the catcher's face mask, strike one. So fascinatingly, Ben Rosenblatt's first two plate appearances, he's out, but those don't count against his batting average because they were sack bunts. His third plate appearance, he's not out. He reaches first base, but that will count against his batting average because it was a reach on error. Baseball's a funny game like that. We'll see if Dr. Off shows bunt again. He does. Pulls back, and it's a high ball one. Dr. Off probably primarily aiming for a sack bunt to move Rosenblatt to second, but Dr. Off does have some wheels on the base pads, so you never know as he shows bunt and slices it foul. And now a bunt is out of the question with a two-strike count. Because if you foul off a bunt attempt with two strikes, that's a strikeout. You don't get another chance. So conventional wisdom says don't go for a bunt when there's two strikes. Another pickoff attempt, and Shusta almost made a big mistake there going sidearm, but it was well covered by Wyatt at first. Dr. Off lifts it into shallow right center. And it's caught by the second baseman by Wires for out number one. Now we cycle back to the top of Brookline's order with the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. First pitch, and he slices it foul, strike one. Sawada, his last time up, popped out to the shortstop, hoping he can do something to move the runner this time around. That one just misses, ball one. That one in the zone, strike two. Brief timeout called. Hits a hard grounder over to second, kind of dies on the dirt. Picked up, thrown to second for one. On to first, not in time, and the throw gets away. And Sawada gets to advance to second on the error. So a fielder's choice, but an E6.
And now with two down and a runner at second, up comes the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. Siegel, the only Warriors player with a base hit so far today. And actually, each side has only got one base hit so far in this ball game as a timeout is quickly called. Last time up, Siegel got a single down the left field line, stole second, advanced to third on an error, and then came in to score on a wild pitch. That one in the dirt, ball one. That one in the zone, strike one. Takes that one just inside, ball two. Fouls that one off, strike two. Two and two, the count to Siegel with two outs and a runner at second. Still tied at one here in the top of the third. Sawada so taking off. Siegel hits a grounder over to short. Juggled by the shortstop. He lost it, and Siegel is going to leg it out on the E6. Back-to-back -back errors benefit the Warriors as they now put runners at the corners for the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Brendel hits one foul up the first base line for strike one. Brendel, his last time up, went down on strikes looking. You know, he wants to put one in play here with the potential go-ahead run at third. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw Siegel go for second in this situation with runners on first and third. And that one is a high ball one. Brookline was looking for a balk call there, but the ump says not a balk. Siegel takes off, pitches outside for a ball. They throw to a cutoff man and let Siegel take second. Tried to bait Sawada into going for home when they had a cutoff man there to make it a shorter throw home, but he did not bite on it. Two and one, the count to Brendel. Runners at second and third. That one is in there, strike two. Two and two, the count. Two down, runners at second and third for Brendel. Big pitch coming here. And it's in the dirt, well blocked by Allen to prevent a wild pitch. Oh wait, I, I, I guess I lost track of the balls and strikes because that's a walk to Elias Brendel. Or is that is that what the Dover Sherborne coach is asking about? Am I, am I crazy? Well, there's going to be a discussion. Uh, between the umps. And yeah, I think they were double checking to make sure that was four balls and they say it was. So the walk by Brendel loads the bases with two down. Now up the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. Hom has had an RBI hit in each of the past two games. Does he have one here? Lifts it, shallow center, chasing, and they've got it. 
hung in the air just a little too long. And Brookline leaves runners stranded on every base. We move to the bottom of the third. Still tied at one. It'll be the two, three, four hitters coming up for the Raiders, Olsen, Mariano, and Wyatt. And really, this is the stage of the game where things really start to get interesting because now all the starting batters have seen the starting pitcher's stuff at least once. So it's a question of how do the hitters adjust their approach to what the opposing pitcher is bringing to them. And what does that produce offensively? And in a case where what that produces is more contact, on a day like today, that can be very dangerous. We saw, I mean, we've already seen a number of errors. The slightly darker overcast sky has, cost, uh, has caused a couple of infielders to lose track of high pop-ups, and we've seen, you know, a, a couple of uh, players juggle the ball in terms of fielding or slightly off on their throws. You know, I mean, weather conditions are far from ideal today. They're far from the worst we've seen so far this year. But, you know, between the rain earlier today and the cold, you know, the ground's going to be a little more uneven than it usually is. So we'll see what that amounts to as we move to the bottom of the third, leading off for Dover Sherborne, the center fielder, number 24, Brian Olson. First pitch low, ball one. Swing and a miss there, strike one. Olsen, the only Raiders player to get a clean base hit so far. Not the only player to reach, but the only one credited with a base hit as he got a single to right his last time up. Chases that one low and away, strike two. That one skips in the dirt, ball two. So interestingly enough, both teams got a base hit in the first inning off their number two batter. But since then, no player from either side has gotten a clean base hit. But we'll see what happens here in this inning. Swing and a miss, strike three. You could see Olsen trying to check his swing on that one, but it went around. One down. Now batting the designated hitter, number three, Luca Mariano. That one curves in, strike one. Mariano drew a walk his last time up. Takes that one low, ball one. That one bounces in low, ball two. Chases that one low, strike two. Two and two, the count to Mariano. That one skips in the dirt, ball three. After that opening curveball, everything has been low 
from Hoffman so far, and now we've got a full count. And he gets him swinging low on that one, and Melton applies the tag. And it's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Owen Hoffman. With two down and the base empty, up comes the first baseman, number 17, Thomas Wyatt. That one doesn't curve enough. Comes in high, ball one. That one catches the low corner, strike one. Again, Hoffman working that lower part of the zone, which worked wonders against Mariano. But this one's well hit into right field, and a throw to first from right is not in time. Brendel makes Wyatt run it out, but Wyatt not taking anything for granted. He runs it out and gets the two-out single. Now batting the left fielder, number 27, Will Foreman. Throw back to first, and Wyatt dives back safe. That one just low, ball one. Foreman, his last time up, popped out to first. Swing and a miss there, and a throw down to first. As no one was really ready for that one, uh, Wyatt was caught a little off balance and had to dive back to the bag, but I don't think Rosenblatt was ready for the throw from Melton. I don't think Melton was ready for Wyatt to be stumbling back to the bag. This one hard hit up the middle, taken off a couple bounces by Hom, thrown to first in time for out number three. It was a good break on the bags by Wyatt, forced Hom to have to go to first, but he completes the long throw. And through three, we are still tied at one apiece. It'll be the five, six, seven hitters coming up for Brookline, Adam Rosenblatt, Melton, and Hoffman. Jackson Schuzda back out on the mound for Dover Sherborne. Schuzda and Hoffman through the first three innings engaged in a bit of a pitcher's duel so far. Just one base hit for Brookline, just two for Dover Sherborne. Both teams have had their situations where they've threatened to score and both managed to sneak one run across, but... Not much offensively from either side thus far. Leading off here on the top of the fourth for Brookline, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt, his first time up, flew out to left. As he takes that one low and away for ball one.
He slices this one foul, strike two. And checks his swing that time as the pitch comes in low, ball two. And that one's high for ball three. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Rosenblatt came into this contest with two walks on three plate appearances. Does he have another walk here? No, hits a grounder over to first. Juggled a bit by Wyatt, but he recovers and covers first for the first out. Now batting the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. That one inside, ball one. Catches the outside corner that time, strike one. Melton is last time up, grounded out to third. That one hits the corner as well, strike two. Hits another grounder back to third, fielded again by Goldberg, long throw to first in time. And that is out number two. <clears throat> Now batting the pitcher, number 15, Owen Hoffman. Last time up, Hoffman went down on strikes. As takes that one outside, ball one. And a hard hit there, but it's fielded well by Lipsky, thrown to first for out number three. Brookline down in order in the top of the fourth, and we remain tied at one. <coughs> very interesting. Shusta's strike-heavy, efficient form of pitching really does run counter to a lot of Brookline's greatest strengths offensively. Coming into this game, Brookline had a team batting average of 225, but a team on base percentage of 412. They had 34 walks and 7 hit-by-pitches as compared to 29 base hits. You know, they really have thrived in, you know, taking what pitchers give them. And Shusta's not really giving them a lot so far. And it will be the six, seven, eight hitters due up for the Raiders here in the bottom of the fourth. Allen, Shusta, and Goldberg.
Hoffman back on the mound for his fourth inning of work. Leading off for the Raiders, the catcher, number two, Theodore Allen. First pitch hits a chopper over to short, fielded by Hom, thrown to first, and they've got out number one. One pitch, one out. Now up, the pitcher, number four, Jackson Shuzda. Shuzda, his last time up, he went down on strikes to lead off the second inning. First pitch drops in low, ball one. This one sliced foul. And this one skied up in the air, high out to right. Brendel tracking it, and he's got it for out number two. Quick two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Now up the third baseman, number seven, Max Goldberg. First pitch in there, strike one. That one comes in low, ball one. And tips that one in the glove, strike two. One and two, the count to Goldberg with two down and the base is empty here in the bottom of the fourth. And that one skips in for ball two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Through four innings, we remain tied at one apiece as the hoffman Shusta pitcher's duel continues. Here at the end of four, I'd like to take a moment to direct your attention to some helpful links in the description section of this video. First at the top, you'll find a link to the official uh, PayPal account for the Brookline High Baseball Booster Club, which I believe is called At Bat for Brookline. So if you would like to support the Brookline High Baseball program financially, you can donate some money there. Below that, you can see a link and phone number for our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Community Foundation. For over 100 years, the Brookline Community Foundation has been a trusted partner, supporting Brookline by investing in organizations and initiatives that help create opportunity and promote equity for everyone who lives, learns, works, and plays in our community. Among the foundation's many grant programs is the BCF Scholarship Fund for Brookline High School, which provides graduating BHS students with scholarships to help fund post-secondary education. To date, thanks to the generosity of over 140 donors, BCF has raised over $1.4 million in scholarship funding and just last year awarded over $180,000 to Brookline High School for scholarships for the class of 2023. Your help is crucial to supporting Brookline youth as they embark on the next steps in their educational journeys. Visit brooklinecommunity.org or call 617-566-4442 to learn more about the BCF Scholarship Fund and how you can make a difference right here in Brookline. Once again, brooklinecommunity.org or call 617-566-4442. And again, all that information down the description section 
down below. First pitch is in for strike one. To the left fielder, number 18, Ben Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt, his last time up, reached on an E3. Takes strike two to the outside there. And he fouls one off his back. Boy, isn't that a trip for physics. He hit a foul ball and it bounced off his back. Still 0-2 the count. And takes that one high, manages to check his swing. One and two the count. And that one just missed, ball two. And a timeout called. Slices that one foul, stays alive at two and two. And connects, lifts it out to shallow center. Sliding catch could not be collected. And that's a leadoff single for Ben Rosenblatt for his first hit of the year. Now with the runner on first, up comes the third baseman, number eight. No, we've got a pinch hitter. We've got a pinch hitter and I think that is number 21, Hugh Bollinger. As he shows bunt, pulls back for ball one. Slices that one foul, strike one. Bollinger so far this season, three for nine with a steal, two runs scored, and one RBI. Pinch hitting here in place of Ben Doktoroff. Throw back to first, and Rosenblatt dives back safely. Takes that one inside, ball two. Bollinger hits a hard grounder through the right gap into right field. And just like that, back-to-back -back singles for the Warriors. Brookline trying to get something started here in the top of the fifth. Runners at first and second, one out, or nobody out, I should say. As we cycle to the top of the order, and we're going to have a pinch runner coming in for Brookline's lead runner. Number 19, Devin Chin. Comes in as a pinch runner for Ben Rosenblatt. Chin, a bit of a base running specialist for Brookline. He's been used a few times as a pinch runner. Scored once as he scored the tying run in that seventh inning rally against Natick on Monday.
So we'll certainly see what kind of defensive changes have to be made in the bottom half of this inning with a pinch runner coming in for Rosenblatt and a pinch hitter coming in for Doktorov. But for now, Brookline's focus is on offense as they cycle back to the top of the order with the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. And he hits a liner up the right field line. That is fair. A big chance to score here. Chin rounds third, racing for home. He scores. Brookline takes the lead. Bullinger down to third on the throw, and Sawada down to second. The captain comes through for Brookline with the RBI single to right. And now Brookline in the driver's seat with a two to one lead and runners at second and third with nobody out in the top of the fifth. It looks like the Raiders are gonna get some bullpen action started as Brookline starting to break through a little bit on offense. We'll see if Harrison Siegel can start breaking things open. First pitch, and he rips one through the left gap. One run is in. Sawada rounds third, racing for home. It's going to be close. He's not going to make it. They tag him out at home. Harrison Siegel does drive in Bollinger, but a big throw from left field by Foreman catches Sawada at home. So now a runner at second, one out as Siegel did advance on the throw. And now batting with a runner at second and one out. The right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Siegel taking off for third and Brendel fouls it off. 0-2 oh, the count. So two of Brookline's co-captains come through with big RBI singles to give them the lead here. Can Brendel add to it? A throw back to second after Siegel tried to take off for third on the last pitch, an understandable check back. That one misses outside, ball one. Brendel 0 for 1 so far with a fly out and a walk. And that one misses just outside, ball two. Brendel slices it foul and out of play, stays alive at two and two. Two and two, the count. Runner at second, one out. And that one catches the high corner, strike three. Brendel thought he had high ball three, but instead it's the second out. So two down, Dover Sherborne trying to get out of the inning and limit the damage. Now up the shortstop number 13, Felix Hom, as he takes low ball one. Siegel still standing at second, a fast runner. He's scored once so far today. He's taking off for third, and Hom rips one out to right field, over the right fielder's head, but he tracks it down and makes the grab for out number three. He gave it a ride, but good tracking out there and right by John Clark. Secure the last out of the inning. But Brookline gets two runs on the board. 
and takes a 3-1 lead over Dover Sherborne. And boy, you never know where the spark is going to come from. Ben Rosenblatt, who came in to this game 0 for 0 with two sack bunts, gets his first base hit of the season for a leadoff single, then a surprise pinch hitter in Hugh Bollinger comes through with a single of his own to put two runners on. And then Keenan Sawada and Harrison Siegel, the co-captains, with back-to-back -back RBI singles. And although Sawada got thrown out at home and then the Raiders were able to get out of the inning with no further damage, Brookline has still taken a two-run lead in a game where, up to this point, the offense were struggling to get anything going. But now the Raiders, with their chance to respond in the bottom half of the inning, it'll be the 9-1-2 hitters, Lipsky, Wires, and Olsen. Hoffman back on the hill for his fifth inning of work. First pitch in there, strike one. Lipsky, his last time up, flew out to center. Takes strike two there. And a timeout called. And that one's in there, strike three. A very efficient strikeout for Hoffman that time. He's had a lot of at-bats where he's really had to battle the hitter for a number of pitches, but that time, three pitches, three strikes. Now batting as he fouls off the first pitch, the second baseman, number 28, Grant Wires. A nice note in the live chat from Peter Alphas. You are a very good uh, at play-by-play -play for a high school production. Thank you very much, Peter. That one comes in over Wires' head for ball one. Wires, his last time up, grounded out to second and the second inning. In the first, he reached on an E5 and came in to score what is so far the Raiders' only run. Got a few drops starting to fall from the sky, so we'll see how that progresses. As this one is going to be ripped all the way out to left center, chased down in the gap and thrown back in. It'll be a one-out single for Grant Wires. Now batting the center fielder, number 24, Brian Olson. Olson, one for two so far with a single and a strikeout. Throw back to first, and Wires dives back safely. That one skips in the dirt for ball one. Swing and a miss there, strike one.
That one hits the outside corner for strike two. Swing and a miss. Fulton with the curve for strike three. Hoffman's second K of the inning, and now with two down and a runner at first, up comes the designated hitter, number three, Luca Mariano. First pitch, and the runner goes. Throw down to second, and he's safe. Wires moves into scoring position. Looks like there was a bit of a, almost a hesitation move, but he realized he had been perhaps caught between the bags and decided to just take off. Good decisive action on the base paths by Wires. This one sliced high, gonna stay in the infield. And Sawada's got it for out number three. We are through five with a few raindrops starting to fall out here in Dover. Our score after five, the Brookline Warriors three, the Dover Sherborne Raiders one. And it looks like we are going to have a pitching change for the Raiders. Number 25, Gavin Lynch takes over on the mound for Jackson Shuzda. Shuzda pitched five innings, gave up three runs, two of them earned. And despite it being a pretty strong performance on the mound, I would say, Unfortunate as it is, if uh, unless Dover Sherborne comes back and at least ties the game, Shuzda would be the pitcher on credit for the loss. Do up for Brookline will be the five, six, seven hitters, Adam Rosenblatt, Melton, and Hoffman. So leading off for Brookline here in the top of the sixth, the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt. And there's going to be a quick meeting at the mound between Lynch and Allen. First pitch in the zone, strike one. This one sliced foul, strike two. That one inside, ball one. Yeah. 
And this one is fouled. Rosenblatt stays alive at one and two. And takes that one high, ball two. Rosenblatt 0 for 2 so far today with a fly out to left and a ground out to first. And hits one off the end of his bat there, taking it second by wires for out number one. So one out, now up for Brookline, the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Melton 0 for 2 so far today with a pair of ground outs to third. That pitch is outside ball one. Next one is high for ball two. That one misses outside, ball three. A 3-0 count to Melton. Takes strike one all the way. Oops. And that one just catches the high corner, strike two. So now a full count to Melton. That one catches the outside corner for strike three. Lynch bounces back from the 3-0 count, throws three straight strikes. Now with two down, up comes the pitcher, number 15, Owen Hoffman, and he takes strike one. That one catches the inside corner. Hoffman might have been fooled thinking that pitch was going to come a lot more inside than it did as you saw him backing away. 0-2 now the count. Fouls it off, stays alive at 0-2. And he hits a dribbler over to third. Goldberg Bear hands it, throws to first, and completes the third out of the inning. This Brookline goes down in order. In the top of the sixth. Their, fun fact, their third time going down in order in an even-numbered inning. And each time it's been the same three batters, Rosenblatt, Melton, and Hoffman. So rough day at the plate for that part of the order for Brookline. But... 
Brookline still holding the lead. Going into the bottom of the sixth, three to one. It'll be the four, five, six hitters due up for Dover Sherborne, Wyatt, Foreman, and Allen. Brookline sticking with their starter, Owen Hoffman. Bring him back out for a sixth inning of work as the starter. It's very interesting. We saw a dominant start uh, from Charlie Engelman yesterday for Brookline. Gave up no runs and no hits through the first five innings, but it was the sixth inning where cracks started to show, and ultimately Engelman had to be pulled. We'll see what Hoffman is able to do here in his sixth inning of work, starting against the first baseman, number 17, Thomas Wyatt. First pitch in there, strike one. Wyatt has had a pretty strong day at the plate so far as he chased that one low for strike two. Wyatt's last time up, he got a single. His first time up, he got a sack fly to drive in Dover Sherborne's only run. So he is one for one so far today with a hit, a sack fly, and an RBI as he takes ball one there. So one and two, the count to Wyatt. Chase that low, it got away from Melton. And so he'll have to throw to first and it is taken off the dirt by Rosenblatt. A bit of a, bit of a pause to make sure that that strikeout held as an out, but it does. Big first out get for Hoffman as this first pitch comes in high to the left fielder, number 27, Will Foreman. This one lifted deep out to left center, but it's tracked out and left by Rosenblatt for out number two. Foreman gave it quite the ride, but ultimately hung in the air for just too long. Two down now, up comes the catcher, number two, Theodore Allen. First pitch fouled off his foot, strike one. Not only are some sparse raindrops falling out here in Dover, starting to get some wind whipping through. Weather gradually looking more and more like the mess we got last week. And this is a hard hopper fielded by Bollinger at third, thrown to first in time. And Hoffman puts the Raiders hitters down in order in the sixth. We move to the seventh and final inning out here in Dover. Our score at the end of six, the Brookline Warriors three, the Dover Sherborne Raiders one. For Brookline, it'll be the eight nine one hitters Ben Rosenblatt, Bollinger, and Sawada do up here in the top of the seventh. Gavin Lynch back out on the mound for his second inning of relief. 
hoping to keep the deficit manageable for one last comeback attempt in the bottom half of this inning. <clears throat> All right, start of the seventh and final inning. Will Brookline be able to add to their lead here in the top half, or will it still be a two-run deficit when we go to the bottom? First pitch from Lynch is low for ball one. Leading off for Brookline is the left fielder, number 18, Ben Rosenblatt. Takes strike one. Rosenblatt one for two so far today. With a fly out and a single. As he takes strike two. Of course, that single, not only was it his first hit of the season, it also started that big fifth inning rally for the Warriors that gave them the lead they have now. Lynch takes a beat off the mound. Resets, one and two, the count to Rosenblatt. That one inside, ball two. And he did he go around? They say yes, Rosenblatt could not check his swing. And he goes down on strikes. Now batting the third baseman, number 21, Hugh Bollinger. Bollinger fouls off the first pitch, strike one. Bollinger came in in the fifth inning as a pinch hitter and ultimately also a defensive substitution at third base for the starter, Ben Doktoroff. Got a big pinch hit single to help set up the go-ahead runs for Brookline as he would come in to score the most recent run himself to make it 3-1. Hits a dribbler right back to the mound, fielded by Lynch. Thrown to first, and that'll be out number two. Two up and two down so far here on the top of the seventh. Now we cycle back to the top of the order with the second baseman, number five, Keenan Sawada. Swata calls brief time. Swata, I believe, is one for three so far today with an RBI. And yes, that is correct. He's popped out, grounded into a fielder's choice, and got an RBI single 
as he fouls that one off for strike one. Of course, that was a very big RBI single as that drove in the go-ahead run. And chase that one low, strike two. Rain feels like it might be starting to ramp up a bit. It could prove difficult for the Brookline defense as they try and hold their lead in the bottom half of the inning. For now, we are still in the top half as Sawada takes a high ball one. Swing and a miss. Caught with the high heat. Sawada goes down on strikes. Brookline goes down in order. And now we go down to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Brookline three, Dover Sherborne one, and Owen Hoffman is coming back out onto the mound to try and finish what he started. The last chance for the Raiders will involve their seven, eight, nine hitters. Uh, presumably Lynch in place of Shusta's spot in the order, but they might bring a pinch hitter, you never know. And then Goldberg and Lipsky. Like I said, with this being the last chance to try and come back, and with it being the bottom of the order, you never know, you might see some pinch hitters come in. But for now, it looks like Gavin Lynch is the one getting ready to step to the plate. It'll be his first time against Hoffman after coming on in relief of Jackson Shuzda. He's done well in his relief efforts, two shutout innings to keep his team in this. And now he leads off here in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch, it's a hard grounder snagged by Bollinger. Thrown to first is high, and it's over Rosenblatt's head. And Lynch will go down to second on the E5. Now with... A runner at second in the tying run at the plate. Up comes the third baseman, number seven, Max Goldberg. And they've got a pinch runner coming in for Lynch. And it looks like a pinch hitter coming up for Goldberg. Give me a second. I got to check the roster. Number 10, Ronan Sullivan. Ronan Sullivan will be running in place of Lynch, and then at the plate, I believe that's number 16. And number 16 is Chris Kiesling. So Kiesling at the plate, Sullivan at second as a pinch runner. First pitch, and he lifts it out to left, but it's gonna curve foul. That one in there, strike two. Owen oh, to the count to Kiesling. That one skips in the dirt, blocked by Melton, ball one. One and two, the count to Kiesling. And that one way high for ball two.
The rain falling as the pressure is mounting here in the bottom of the seventh. Two and two the count. Fouls it off, stays alive, two and two. The rain really starting to come down now, but that one curves in for strike three. Big first out get for Hoffman. One out, now batting the shortstop, number 21, Ross Lipsky. And the first pitch is low for ball one. That one in the dirt, ball two. That ball is just gonna get slipperier and slipperier as the rain ramps itself up. Throw back to second. And Sullivan back. This one lifted deep out to left center, and it drops in the gap. Sullivan is going to round third and head for home as the throw briefly gets away, but Lipsky is going to hold at second. A big RBI double from Ross Lipsky. And it is now a one-run ball game, tying run at second as we cycle back to the top of the order. And we've got a meeting at the mound for Brookline. So Hoffman leaves the game. Well, leaves the mound at least as he's going to swap with the right fielder, number nine, Elias Brendel. Brendel, so far this season, he's had two pitching appearances, one of them a start. He's pitched four total innings with an ERA of 3.50, a whip of two, and five strikeouts, and uh, what doesn't show on the stats there is that he did get the save in the season opening win against Newton South, came in and pitched one inning. Here he's going to need two outs and he's going to need to get him against the top of the dover Sherborne order. And he's going to need to do it as the conditions have been getting wetter and wetter. Ross Lipsky stands at second after a big RBI double. Drove in the pinch runner Ronan Sullivan. And we will be cycling to the top of the Dover Sherborne order with the second baseman number 28 Grant Wires.
right, looks like that's the end of the warm-up throws for Brendel. <coughs> and the rain not pouring as hard as it was a couple minutes ago. That could be helpful for Brendel for maintaining control as he tries to finish this one. Stepping into the box for the Raiders, the second baseman, number 28, Grant Wires. First pitch in there, strike one. Fouls that one off, strike two. 0 oh and two, the count. One down, tying run in scoring position. 0 oh and two, the count to wires. That one low and away, ball one. That one also low and away, ball two. Slices it foul, and he stays alive at two and two. It may be cold and windy and wet out here, but these two teams are making us sweat this one out. Two and two, the count. One run, ball game. One out, runner at second, representing the potential tying run here in the bottom of the seventh. That one high and in, ball three. Full count now to Wires. And another defensive swing by Wires keeps him alive with a full count. Try for the payoff pitch again. Hits a grounder over to second, fielded by Sawada, thrown to first, and that is out number two, but the tying run does move to third. With two outs and the tying run just 90 feet away, up comes the center fielder, number 24, Brian Olson. And no, he will not come up. They're going to issue an intentional walk. So Olson gets a free pass. Now up is the designated hitter number three, Luca Mariano. First pitch, it's a grounder over to third. Field it juggled by Bollinger, we're tied! Mariano brings in Lipsky. On the E5, Lipsky into score, and we are tied. 
And now all the pressure points the other way as now on second base, Olsen represents the potential winning run as up comes the first baseman, number 17, Thomas Wyatt. First pitch in there, strike one. And that one fouled off, strike two. Now Brookline needs to get this third out just to have a chance to try and take the lead back again. Hits a grounder up the middle, fielded by Hom, thrown to first. Safe, he legs it out. Wyatt legs out the infield single. And this inning is not over yet. Now coming up, the left fielder, number 27, Will Foreman. And the decision to intentionally walk Olsen has backfired horribly on Brookline as now Olsen represents the potential winning run at third. First pitch is tipped into the glove, strike one. A hit, a walk, a hit by pitch, any of those would end the game for Dover Sherborne. But Brookline needs just one more out to send this to extras. Swing and a miss, strike two. Lifts it, foul and out of play. Stays alive at 0-2. That one way high, but well covered by Melton. For ball one, Melton's job, tremendously important in this situation. A wild pitch could potentially end this ball game as well. That one outside briefly gets away from Melton. That'll just be ball two. Again, the late rainfall hurting Brookline as the rain's starting to ramp up again. Here with a 2-2 count. Bases loaded, two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Game tied at three. Hits a hard grounder over to second, fielded by Sawada, thrown to first, and Brookline does... Get out of the inning without losing the game, but they do lose their lead, and we will be going to extra innings out here in Dover. So the Raiders scrapped together the rally they needed to get those two runs on the board and tie the game. And now Brookline 
will have the first chance to try and score here in extra innings. Now that we're heading to extras on what is already an overcast day, this could start to, uh, time could start to turn into a bit of an issue. There are no stadium lights out here in Dover, and it's not unprecedented for a tie game in extra innings to be postponed due to darkness and then continued the following day. We saw that happen with Brookline's game against Wellesley last year. So it is not outside the realm of possibility. It could be that if we go through this eighth inning without determining a winner, that we might, you know, ha this game might have to be continued tomorrow. which I don't know if they would even continue it tomorrow, considering tomorrow is supposed to be even worse in terms of weather. So this game might, you know, if it is forced to be postponed, it might get postponed all the way to Saturday. But for now, still a chance for either team to try and get the win here in the eighth inning. Leading off for Brookline here in the top of the eighth, the center fielder, number 14, Harrison Siegel. Gavin Lynch back on the mound as Siegel fouls the first one off the catcher's face mask. Check swing, foul, and Siegel behind 0-2 in the count. And Siegel fouls off another, stays alive at 0-2. That one skips in the dirt, ball one. And that hits him. <laughs> and there's some laughter from the Brookline fans says uh, the running joke of Harrison Siegel getting plunked by opposing pitchers continues with his fifth hit by pitch of the season. Now up the pitcher, number nine, Elias Brendel. And that one is a wild pitch, gets away. Siegel down to second. As Brendel just barely ducked under that one, almost got hit himself. And in fact, it almost hit the end of his bat. I was wondering if that was gonna be called a foul ball, but Siegel down to second. And Brendel fouls that one off for strike one.
Throw back to second, gets away, and Siegel thought about taking off. Might have been able to make it, but when you hesitate on your jump, you, you have no choice. You have to go back because if you don't have the jump, you're not going to make it. One and one, still the count to Brendel. Siegel representing the potential go-ahead run at second here in the top of the eighth. Slice that one foul, strike two. Brendel, his last time up, he went down on strikes, hoping to put the ball in play here so he can move the runner. That one just high, ball two. And another one high, ball three. We got a brief break while Lynch is talking to the infield ump. And now the umps are conferring. Was is is Lynch appealing the the ball call? What's going on here? Well, whatever that was. <laughs> Back to the action, full count to Brendel. And Brendel fouls it off, stays alive with a full count. Are they are they trying to chase down an extra ball? Have have they run out of extra balls because so many have been fouled into the woods? Boy, it is just one thing after another with this game. <laughs> the bad weather, the dark skies, slippery field, messing with both defenses. The extra innings, the looming threat of a darkness postponement, and now we're running out of baseballs. This, this is the kind of day we are having here on April 11th, 2024. Okay, now we reset for another payoff pitch. And Brendel draws ball four. So Brendel... Draws the free pass. Now at the plate, the shortstop, number 13, Felix Hom. That one hits the zone, strike one. Hom still looking to reach base for the first time today. 
takes another inside strike. Oh, and two, the count. Swing and a miss. Hom down on three straight strikes for the first out of the inning. Runners at first and second. Now up the first baseman, number 16, Adam Rosenblatt, as he takes ball one. Rosenblatt also looking for his first chance to reach base. Siegel taking off for third. That is a strike, and both runners are allowed to advance. No throw. And both runners now in scoring position with Rosenblatt staring down a 1-1 count. Siegel now at third, Brendel now at second. In there, strike two. And that one, high and away, ball two. Two and two, the count, the potential go-ahead run at third with one down here on the top of the eighth. And that one misses, ball three. Now first base is open, so a walk could actually be potentially helpful to the Raiders, so Lynch with slight more of an edge than your average full count. And Rosenblatt fouls it off and stays alive. Full count, one out, runners at second and third. And that one gets away. Was that a wild pitch on the third strike? It must have been. Or was it a ball four? Either way, it was a wild pitch that brings in Siegel as he scores on a wild pitch for the second time today. I'm going to have to check on Game Changer later whether that whether that was a walk or a strikeout. Either way, Rosenblatt gets to first on the wild uh, since there was a wild pitch. And Siegel comes in to score. Brookline now up 4-3. to three. So Brookline able to take to retake the lead in the top half of the inning. And they're hoping they can add to it with one out and runners at the corners. Now batting the catcher, number 17, Avery Melton. Pick off, look both ways, but no throw. That pitch gets away. Brendel is charging in, and Brendel will score. Another wild pitch gives Brookline the insurance run. One and oh, the count to Melton Rosenblatt now at second. I mean, I said it when Brookline was on the mound. I'll say it again now. So tough with how wet the conditions have become from the rain that has fallen during this game. And it's going to be tough on whoever's on defense. That one uh, catches the low corner. Strike one.
That one, strike two. One and two, the count to Melton. Comes in over his head and gets away, and Rosenblatt decides to hold at second. Brookline almost advanced on the base pads again as another pitch got away. Two and two, the count to Melton. And he golfs one out to right, and that's gonna drop in. Rosenblatt holds at third as Melton gets his first hit of the day. Boy, you could tell that was that was one of those uh, jam singles. Like it sounds like it hurt to hit it, but Melton does get the base hit. Runners at first and third now. For the right fielder, number 15, Owen Hoffman. Hoffman chases that one, strike two. One down here on the top of the eighth, runners at the corners. That one's going to miss ball one. That one gets away. Rosenblatt charging in to home. Another run on another wild pitch. And just like that, Brookline has scored three times here in the top of the eighth. And Adam Rosenblatt, in his first game back from injury, is the latest to score for the Warriors. That pitch comes in low, ball three. Hoffman hits a chopper to short. It's juggled by the shortstop and Hoffman will reach on the E6. Melton advances to third on the play. Now stepping in, the left fielder, number 18, Ben Rosenblatt. And a brief timeout called. Still just one out here on the top of the eighth. Brookline has put three runs on the board, all three of them scoring on a wild pitch. As that one in there, strike two. Hoffman takes off for second and they faked. Hoffman caught between the bags. And he did get tagged. Hoffman thought he dodged around the tag, but Lipsky did get him. The pickoff move successful. And a big second out get for Dover Sherborne.
And Rosenblatt goes down swinging. And just like that, the inning ends. But Brookline back in the driver's seat after a three-run rally. The Warriors, once again, three outs away from victory. Can they get it done this time? As we move to the bottom of the eighth, it will be Allen, Lynch, and Goldberg due up. Or uh, Kiesling, actually. Very similar spot in the order to where the Raiders came up last inning. Elias Brendel, after being unable to get the save in the seventh, will try to get the win here in the eighth. Warm-ups are done. Let's see what the bottom of the eighth inning has in store for us. It's been a wild day already out here in Dover. Leading off for the Raiders, the catcher, number two, Theodore Allen. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two very similar pitches get past Allen, and he finds himself in an 0-2 hole. That one just high. Prendel going back to the same spot a lot this at bat so far. And this one's ripped, but right at Sawada for out number one. It was good contact by Theodore Allen Hard hit ball just happened to be right at a fielder and right at one of Brookline's best fielders in Keenan Sawada. One down, now batting the pitcher, number 25, Gavin Lynch. First pitch high and in, ball one. Lynch got the rally started last inning, reaching on an E5 and his pinch runner... Ronan Sullivan later came in to score as Lynch fouls this one off for strike one. That one high and in for ball two. So Lynch has to duck away from a couple of high and in pitches. Brendel has him with a two and one count right now. 
Slice it foul, strike two. That one, low and away, ball three. A full count now to Lynch. Just misses, ball four. And once again, Sullivan coming out as a courtesy runner for Lynch. So one out, runner at first. And it looks like Goldberg is back out there having subbed back in for Kiesling as he takes strike one to the outside. One is high. That one fouled off, strike two. Randall checks on Sullivan at first. That pitch comes in high, ball two. Two and two, the count to Max Goldberg. Ronan Sullivan, the courtesy runner at first, one down here in the bottom of the eighth. Swing and a miss. Goldberg goes down on strikes, and Brookline is one out away from their fourth straight win. The last hope for Dover Sherborne, the shortstop, number 21, Ross Lipsky. Lipsky played a huge role in their comeback rally in the seventh as he takes ball one high and in there. Got an RBI double to drive in Sullivan and then later came in to score the tying run. That one misses outside, ball two. This one fouled off. Two and one, now the count. That one hits the zone, strike two. The Raiders down to their final strike here in the bottom of the eighth. Two and two, the count to Lipsky. And a timeout is called. Brendel trying to shut the door here. 
and he hits one, and into center field that will drop in. This game is not over. Lipsky keeps the game going with a two-out single to center. And we cycle back around to the top of the order with the tying run now at the plate. Up comes the second baseman, number 28, Grant Wires. Sullivan at second. Lipsky at first. Wires the potential tying run at the plate. And he takes strike one. That one misses, low and away, ball one. And he lifts this one high, out to right, and Hoffman catches it, and that is your ball game. Brookline survives and wins. The final score, the Brookline Warriors six, the Dover Sherborne Raiders three. Make it four straight for the Brookline Warriors as they will go into spring break with a five and one record to start the year. They are halfway to clinching a playoff spot. What a game. You know, a great pitcher's duel between Hoffman and Shuzda to start the game. You know, a rally by Brookline kick started by Ben Rosenblatt. Catalyzed by a pinch hit single from Hugh Bollinger and then Back-to-back -back RBI singles from the captains, Keenan Sawada and Harrison Siegel. And it seemed like Brookline was going to take it all the way at the 3-1 to one score. But then Dover Sherborne scratching and clawing their way to a tie game in the bottom of the seventh. And almost taking the win right then and there with the bases loaded and two down. But ultimately, they go into the eighth, and Brookline, aggressive on the base pads, taking advantage of some pitching miscues, puts three more on the board, takes the 6-3 to three lead, and this time, in the bottom of the eighth, they hold on. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Remember... If you enjoyed this live stream, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Brookline will be back in action next week with three games during spring break week uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, all morning games. So be sure to stay tuned for those. Subscribe to the channel can help. Thank you to all the fans who brought the good vibes in the live chat today. Uh, remember, if there's anything you'd like to say after the live stream is concluded, you can say it in the comment section down below. You can also go down below to the description section of the video where you can find a link to the official PayPal account for the at-bat for Brookline Booster Club, and also a link and phone number for our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Community Foundation. And then below that, some links related to me, which you can also find in the bottom right corner of your screen, my personal website, jessesports.com, where you can find out more about me, the freelance sports broadcasting services that I provide to various teams, and how you can commission those services for your favorite team. You can also skip past all that and email me directly with any questions or requests you may have. And remember to follow me on Instagram where I post highlights from previous live streams and stream links for upcoming live streams. But for this live stream, that is going to do it. Our final score in eight innings, Brookline 6, Dover Sherborne 3. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all for watching and have a good night.